Hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to the Corner Studio. As you can see today, I'm joined by the Director of Learning at the National Holocaust Centre and Museum, Mark Rustling. Um, today is a very special episode based on the Holocaust. First of all, thank you for coming on the show. Not at all. Um, first off, uh, can you just uh, explain to some people what the Holocaust Centre is? Sure. So we're the UK's only dedicated Holocaust Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, we run programmes for about 50,000 young people uh, and adults every year. So we go into schools, we have them come to us, primaries, secondaries, uh, and amazingly we're based about nine miles away from, uh, from where we're sat today in Mansfield, so yeah. just towards Newark. Uh, and the key thing that we do, we teach what happened in the Holocaust, mm -hmm. but we also teach, more importantly, why it happened. So mm -hmm. what were the things that led to this, uh, this genocide? And how do we see some of those things happening again today? Yeah, that's obviously quite good because you want, obviously, children to understand how bad it was and why it happened. And, yeah, so when they hear stuff about it, they'll understand how bad it was. Yeah, and some of those things are absolutely the same as happened before. So if you listen to Kanye West or read any of his tweets, you can see exactly the same things that were being said uh, in Nazi Germany and, and before Nazi Germany, but some of the things are different and are worse than in, in uh, the, the Holocaust and the years leading up to it. So uh, the stuff that we see in social media and online is, is a reach that someone like Goebbels could have only dreamt of. So in some ways, it's actually scarier now. Yeah, I mean, obviously what Kanye West said wasn't very good, but very smart in my opinion. But yeah, obviously, like, a, like you said, uh, helping people, like young people, understand how bad it was and what happened is a good thing. Uh, before we continue with this interesting conversation, here's a segment in the show uh, about how Holly Hollywood's um, portrayal on the Holocaust. Uh, let's take a look. Hollywood has never shied away from sensitive topics, especially when it comes to tragic events, the Holocaust being an example. Many movies have attempted to cover this, all in many different ways, from tragic and realistic to subtle and comedic. Three of the most known examples are Schindler's List, Jojo Rabbit and Boy in the Striped Pajamas. These three portrayals are targeted towards an older demographic due to the sensitive subject. The films display the same event, but in many different ways. Take Schindler's List for an example. The story of a man who looked to profit off World War II and ends up saving many Jews' lives in the process, after being granted permission to have his Jewish workers protected. On the other hand, we have The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, a tale of sadness after a young boy oblivious to the war at his own front door befriends a young Jewish boy who he shares his problems with. The film ends with the audience shocked as the boys wander into the gas chambers under the pretense of having a shower. I don't understand. I saw a film about the camp, and they looked so nice. Turning now to more comedic portrayal, Jojo Rabbit. The story of a young German boy who finds out his mother's secret of hiding a young Jewish girl in the attic. The film has many comedic moments and portrays Hitler as the boy's imaginary best friend. Why so happy? Things are changing. The Allies have taken Italy, France will be next, and soon the war will be over. God damn it! Why does that make you happy? You hate your country that much? I love my country. It's a war I hate. It's pointless and stupid, and the sooner we have peace, the better. So those were three portrayals of the Holocaust in Hollywood. Now, back to Joe. In so that VT picked out some of the movies based on the Holocaust, but obviously there are many more, uh, more examples. Mark, what do you think uh, of Hollywood's portrayal on the films that are based on the Holocaust? Well, I think what sometimes makes for kind of good action movies or tear-jerking movies for Hollywood doesn't always make for accurate historical portrayals of what happened. Yeah. So there are obviously some, some incredible movies, Schindler's List. Um, I would have been about, I think, 11 or 12 when Schindler's List came out. And it definitely changed people's perspective, or maybe for some people, made them think about it for the first time in their lives, yeah. uh, the Holocaust. But then there are others, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, that are so historically inaccurate that actually I would say it's not a legitimate piece of, uh, uh, of creativity, of drama. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's based on a book and a movie as well, based around the friendship between uh, a non-Jewish child and a Jewish child in a concentration camp. 
The problem is that that relationship could have never have happened. Yeah. Because in the concentration camps, there was a selection in the extermination camps. And if you were fit for work, according to uh, the Nazis, you went one way. And if you weren't, as all children weren't, you went another. And you went straight into the gas chambers. Yeah. So that relationship could have never have happened. So ultimately, what, what that film is almost doing is it's, it's portraying uh, something that, A, could never have happened. It's making people have a totally distorted view of the Holocaust. Mm. And it's almost, by the end of it, it's making us feel that the, the Nazis, that the, the non-Jewish child is worth somehow more than the Jewish child. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is, it's historically inaccurate, as I said, but it's also, it's illegitimate. It's not yeah. a legitimate way of portraying the Holocaust, whereas Schindler's List, yes, it takes some creative liberties, maybe, but um, but it is more legitimate way, in my view, of portraying the Holocaust. Yeah, obviously, you're saying that the boys when you watch when you when you'd rewatch the boys' shot pajamas, obviously you'd have a different angle on it if after learning about that, it's learning that it wasn't possible, and you're not you're not wrong to be honest about how you said the non-Jewish child, his life was obviously was like more important apparently that's what it was like portrayed as and they tried to get like the best out of the the bad which was the nazis mm. so obviously when you rewatch it uh, you'll have a, it'd be different and yeah say. i think that's right i mean i think you're almost I, I don't think what the author was trying to do is this but i think this is where it's ended up mm -hmm. that you're almost led to think you're led to look for the nazis not being that bad after all you know they were okay they loved their kids all of this kind of stuff when actually the message from the Holocaust is not that the Nazis were okay, really. They weren't. Um, it's that not just the Nazis did this, but the people who drove the trains, the people who kept the books in Auschwitz, the not just the people who killed, but the people, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, who, when they were faced with the Holocaust and they had the option to not do anything, they either did nothing and let it carry on, mm -hmm. or they actively got involved. Yeah. So that the issue isn't that we're looking for good in bad people, the issue is that we're kind of looking at everyone and saying, the lesson of the Holocaust is, when faced with this stuff, we're all capable of doing it. It's mm. a much harder message. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a message, obviously. Um, that's, that is true, actually. Obviously, people were, were scared to go against the Nazi party back then because you'd obviously, you'd be, you'd probably be killed, wouldn't you? But well, you see, for some people, yes, but actually there's a lot of historical research that says when people were given the options to opt out, so you were told to kill and you said, I don't want to do it, actually the soldiers weren't themselves killed, they were just moved to another job. So mm. actually, they, it, was it fear, was it a desire to fit in and do what your mates are doing, maybe, um, or was it that plenty of people actually agreed with it? I think people obviously agreed with it because they saw Hitler as this, this power and he had this. He was good at he was good at giving speeches and everything. He he was good at uh, like talking to people and everything. So he was obviously and probably manipulative as well, mm. uh, and like kind of brainwashed them into believing that Jews were to a yeah to a certain extent. Or maybe for a lot of others, was saying stuff that they secretly thought anyway. Mm, yeah, so true. actually, people it's it's a much darker message, isn't it? Whereas mm. if you can just say, well, it was just Hitler and these crazy Nazis, and you know it's all done now. Well, that's fine, because the Nazis aren't around anymore, albeit maybe Kanye is one. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but actually, if we're saying we've all got it in us, in the right circumstances or the wrong circumstances to do this, much harder message. Um, yeah, it, it is a hard message. Yeah. Um, now, the Holocaust, uh, Holocaust Memorial Day is right around the corner, so here's a segment to tell you what will be happening. What's your personal opinion on the Holocaust? Why is it so important for this time of day? Um, the Holocaust Memorial Day is really important because it helps people to remember what actually happened in the past. And this is really important for people who have gone through this or have family members that have gone through this because it's a part of their personal history and um, it may make them feel a bit stronger because of what happened and what they've been through and it's sort of like just a nice day to sort of 
get your thoughts together and think about the past, really? Um, it's important because we can't all forget about what happened at the Holocaust and to remember everyone that died and got killed in it. Um, and to be able to support people who have had families that have gone through all that and to, to help them deal with it. What's the purpose of being on the memorial day and why do you think we should remember those who have passed away during that horrific time? Well, I believe that the uh, memorial day serves as a reminder of the times when people had it rough, compared to now anyway. I mean, um, considering all they went through during the Holocaust and all the stuff that had happened back there with um, Jewish people and all the discrimination, it wasn't, it wasn't a very nice time to, to live in. And I believe that if we remember it, it always will be a reminder of what could have happened and what could have been, but now obviously we live in a much peacefuler place. Uh, Mark, do you have any plans on Holocaust Memorial Day and does the museum, does that have any uh, plans on Holocaust Memorial Day, which on the 27th of this month? Yeah, absolutely. So we're doing uh, five events around the country, Manchester, mm -hmm. Sheffield and three in London. Uh, we've sent out a school assembly and school lessons to about 5,000 schools. Mm -hmm. And around all of this, we're building the testimony of our survivors. So it's all one of good people. Um, hearing people like me talking about it, why we think it's important, the lessons that we've learned. But actually the real strength is when you hear it from somebody who was there, who saw yeah. it. So in those events, we're, we're taking with us four of our survivors who um, all come from various parts of Eastern Europe who were caught up in the Holocaust. So who were hidden as children, uh, hidden in barns, uh, made to convert from Judaism to survive. Uh, that's the real kind of the real hard-hitting testimony because it's unarguable those people saw it yeah well if obviously if it was coming from people uh, from people that obviously weren't there uh, they'd obviously listen but um, if they obviously if people people talking telling them their experience obviously as they were there it's a lot more real and hard-hitting yeah in my opinion, absolutely so we're, we're basing it all around the, the testimony of those survivors mm. um, why, why do you think it's important to remember the Holocaust? Two reasons I would give. I mean, I could give a lot more, but two big reasons. One, it's the, it is unique. Unfortunately, it's not a unique genocide. There'd be many more, but it is unique in its scale. Six million people, two thirds of all the European Jewish people wiped out. Mm -hmm. And the second, we kind of talked about it earlier. The reasons why it happened, the hatreds, the othering of the Jewish people, they happen now and they happen at real speed on social media in a way that the Nazis could have only imagined. Yeah. So actually, in some ways, the lessons are much more imp important now because of social media and the internet than they were 20 years ago. Yeah, obviously, social media would as a massive uh, uh, fact in that as well. And yeah, obviously, you want people in s social media you want them to know as well in about the Holocaust and everything, and you want to show them why it's important. Absolutely. Mm. Um, well, that's all we have time for. Uh, Mark, thank you for coming, coming on the show today. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, on what has been a very special episode of The Corner Studio. I've been Joe, uh, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>